big farm in the country to California. They crossed through three states and they are in California now. Um, but the eight hour limit was hit. The Facebook live streams got ended and we're picking it back up because we want to follow this journey all the way to its end. We want to see the place where these pigs end up and we want to show you on live stream and elevate their stories in their final moments. And so we are going to uh, just to remind you all why we're here and why we're taking this action. Uh, following the recent investigation led by DXC investigator Raven Deerbrook into the supply chain of Smithfield of this horrible company all the way from Utah to a California slaughterhouse. We're going to pull up the video here, the documentary that was released to expose everything Raven documented in just a very short 10 minute mini doc. But we're just going to show you one part right here uh, to remind you the urgency of this issue, not just for the 600 or so animals who are on those trucks we're following right now, but also for all of us because our fates are connected, like Raven says in the video. So uh, if we can pull up the documentary, Unseen, we'll just show you uh, about a 30 second clip or so where you can see the infections being cut from these pigs' bodies, hidden from the public, um, all the corruption, deception, and, and danger to the public health that Raven exposed. Infections are so common and run so deep. An inspector is dedicated to cut out what they can see so the rest of their body can be sold as though they were healthy. This is animal agriculture. The industry wants us to focus on what we put in our mouth or buy in a store, on an object not its origin. But what happens if we ignore the warnings while building our house on injustice? So that's just a short clip of this super powerful documentary that investigator Raven Deerbrook produced and we have her with us here. Um, Raven, if you want to unmute and start speaking, we can uh, jump to see you. Hi. Hi. Um, can, you can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. So, um, so two, um, we are in two vehicles right now following similar trucks to uh, following three slaughter trucks from Smithfield Circle Four Farms in Utah, which is the largest pig confining operation in the world. And, um, and we're following these trucks this time to Farmer John's Slaughterhouse in Los Angeles. So it's, um, it was shocking to me when I learned that not only are, is California permitting um, this to happen, but they constructed a brand new slaughterhouse. The state allowed a brand new slaughterhouse to be constructed in Stockton, California, a 200,000 square foot facility, USDA inspected top of the line. And I wanted to see what the industry was hiding from us and what, would, what this brand new facility would reveal. So I, be I began investigating the facility and during the investigation, um, I encountered a whistleblower who assisted me in, um, in documenting some of the conditions that workers are exposed to every day, some of the abuses of the animals, and really just things that people aren't being shown. And this is just a glimpse. This is just in the very short time that I started looking at this facility. Um, this is what I found, and it's just a glimpse. Um, and I'm not, I'm not a expert investigator. I've never made a documentary before. And if someone like me can go into a facility like this and just and see these types of things, just imagine what else is being hidden from us. All the other facilities like Smithfield Farmer John here in Los Angeles, um, what's being kept hidden from us. It's a danger to everyone. It's a danger to the animals. It's a danger to the workers. It's a danger to the public. So I really felt compelled to, to share, to try to share some of that. Um, and um, so this is what, um, this is what Unseen represents is this, um, this investigation of this facility. Thanks so much, Raven. And you're absolutely right. So much happens behind closed doors that we don't see. I think the, the name you gave your piece, Unseen, is perfectly fitting. Um, there's so much that goes without us seeing it, and that's why we need people to, to bring it to the surface. And we actually do have activists on the ground in LA. I don't know, Brittany, if you're there, if you can hear us, if you want to unmute, we have activists at Farmer John's Slaughterhouse right now, um, where we think that the, the, truck, the trucks you're following, Raven, are headed. Uh, that's the best guess we have anyways. Um, so we have activists who are there ready to meet them. Brittany or Emic, are you all there able to show us what's going on um, 
at Farmer John's right outside of LA. Maybe they can't hear me. So until they uh, join us, just want to ask people who are watching us, thank you so much for joining us at, you know, after midnight, at least if you're on Pacific time, um, but for joining us anytime, wherever you are, because this is really, really crucial that we have public support behind us. People are our biggest asset and not just people who are on the ground doing investigations and actions like Raven, but all of the people supporting online. So if you're watching this and the pigs or showing them comfort, and that's just the messed up system that we live in, that the people who are showing up with compassion at a place of violence are the ones that law enforcement tries to, to stop. But if we have enough people with us, including people on, online showing support, then we can, we can start to change that and we can create a different world where the people are standing on the other side and we have the majority support. Um, Raven, it seems like you have better signal now. How long have you yeah, been in yeah. the car? Do you want to just tell people? I don't think you can show people the road. It's probably too dark, but can you just tell people? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, let me try just for a second here um, because we are actually following a slaughter truck that we've been following for over eight hours um, from Minardsville, Utah, um, where Circle 4, owned by Smithfield, runs its operations hidden in the desert where they pollute the water pollute the air with ammonia and hydrogen sulfide and hide these these animals away in dark sheds um, where they can they can do whatever they want with them and um, and we um, we believe there are over half half, um, half a million animals confined at circle four so tonight we're following just three trucks to one facility and that represents 600 individuals 600 unique lives who are in these trucks right now who have been abused their entire life. They're only six months old. They're basically still babies and they're covered in lesions. They have infections, they have pneumonia and they're now being trucked to their death at this um, at the Smithfield facility, almost in the heart of Los Angeles. So we've been following these trucks for eight hours, um, I believe over 500 miles. Um, and this is a daily thing. This, this happens um, almost every day multiple trucks come into California from Smithfield in Utah um, with these, these animals who have been cruelly confined, which California voters overwhelmingly are against. And they're just, they're trucked here with no one, no one to, to scrutinize what they're doing. They pass through at least two, um, two checkpoints, two points of entry. Um, and there is, they barely blinked um, because this is a daily thing. It's been normalized. Um, and so this animal cruelty, the systemic animal Raven, you just froze a little, a little bit again, but you might jump back. But for people who don't know, Raven Deerbrook executed this investigation, produced the documentary Unseen, and is, is right back following this, this trail again from Smithfield's largest farm in the middle of Utah to California. Uh, just a really dedicated activist and a huge shout out to her for the work she's put in and to all the, all the activists on the ground with her right now, too. It's so normal because it happens all right it sounds like um it sounds like the folks in los angeles can jump on now so if you all want to unmute yourselves Brittany, and and just just take over try to expose what what this is which is catching up just said and you'll get a glimpse of what happens in those rocks that are right now raven doesn't normally speak that fast it's just um it it delayed and then it's spit out everything that you were saying incredibly fast, Raven. But um, I think Brittany is saying that she can show us what's going on in LA if you want to unmute yourselves and jump on screen. Hi. Hi. Uh, Hi. Yeah. So it's getting pretty late here. We haven't had any more trucks come by. Um, some activists are having to leave because it's, it's getting really late. People have work in the morning or they have animals to get home to to feed. Um, but we've got a bare bones crew here right now. And we're going to be out here until you guys um, make it out here. So there will be people to greet you guys once you get here. 
Um, Thanks so much, Brittany. Totally understandable. It's it's awesome that people mobilized in short notice and have been out there all night when, you know, they they still have work tomorrow. But the good news is that these folks are 30 minutes away, so hopefully we'll be able to, to have that final confrontation sometime soon. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, we will definitely be here. It sounds like we probably won't be able to stop the trucks for very long. The supervisor here at um, the slaughterhouse is really reticent to let us stop the trucks at all. Um, so we're, we're gonna try, but it probably be very short, um, a very short stop for the trucks as soon as they get here. Good to know. And, and I really like the face mask that you're wearing. Did you have that made? Um, it was actually made by another group here in LA that works with LA Animal Safe and it's called Slaughter Free LA. And they're actually focusing on um, sponsors that Farmer John's uh, is a sponsor of. One of their newest sponsors is the LA Football Club here in Los Angeles. They became the newest sponsor of Farmer John's, um, like one of the sporting sponsors um, or sport sponsors. And they, they became a sponsor, I think like three months ago like after the pandemic had already started, after it was already confirmed that employees were contracting COVID here. Um, so the, the activists with Slaughter Free LA have been putting, a, been, been mounting a pressure campaign on the LA Football Club and trying to get systematically all of their sponsors to try to drop Farmer John's as a sponsor. Wow, that's a great campaign. And thanks for sharing with us about what's going on in Los Angeles. There's a lot of groups there for sure working to focus on Smithfield because of how horrible it is. Um, is there anything that you want to say uh, that people can you know, do to get in touch with DXC Los Angeles or support what you all are doing? Um, yeah, we have, uh, we have an Instagram, we have a Facebook. On Facebook, it's Direct Action Everywhere Los Angeles. Instagram, it's DXC Los Angeles. Um, anyone who is in LA or lives in LA, or even if you're planning on visiting LA, like hit us up, send us a message, let us know um, that you're going to be here. And if you if you're looking for events to join, um, you know, even if it's not one of our own events, um, there's always something happening in LA. I mean, even with vigils, there's um, some of the activists here are talking about just staying up after this vigil and going to another vigil that LA Animal Save is putting on in Pico Rivera um, at a cow farm out in Inland Empire. Um, but yeah, if you follow us on Instagram and Facebook, um, we're planning actions. Um, we're still planning campaigns despite COVID. Um, I mean, everything is, is socially distant and we're, we're being safe, but we're still planning, we're still getting active. Um, people in LA like have been finding this pandemic to actually be very freeing because I know, especially for me, like working from home has enabled people to attend a lot more actions during the day, during the week, even during the evenings on a weeknight, because you don't have to get up and, and drive a long commute in the morning. So even though there is a pandemic and we have to be um, safe and, and have to, you know, consider uh, you know, how to not get everyone sick. Um, we're still able to, to mobilize, even like for actions like tonight, um, while remaining socially distant, we can still make our voices heard and we can still, you know, make a change. And Farmer John is, is one of these eyesores in Los Angeles that activists have been seeing and bearing witness here for years. And um, right now is the perfect time to get active and the perfect time to put pressure on Smithfield and Farmer John because this pandemic has exposed to the public how little they actually care about their employees, about the pub, about the public, about um, the environment, about the animals. You know, we've known that for a long while, but it's really pointing out the fact that like over 200 employees at Farmer John have already contracted COVID-19. This is despite Smithfield coming out with um, statements saying that they're boosting um, health, um, you know, adding stuff to help uh, the health and, and, and keep their workers safe. Um, 
And even with 200 cases at this one place, they haven't shut down. If they were really concerned about the workers' health, they would close the lines. They wouldn't have people working here shoulder to shoulder without masks. That's definitely true. Like, no matter what they say they're doing to protect their employees, it's not working because the, the cases keep climbing here at Farmer John's and they've been open every single day. They have not shut down one single day since this pandemic started. They clearly don't care. All of this stuff about caring about their employees' health and, and concerns about public health is all just for show. All they care about is their bottom line, and that they keep making money and they keep slaughtering up to 10,000 pigs every single day. Every night here, you know, no matter what time, actually, uh, there's a truck coming um, right now, actually. It's just about to come down the street. I'm going to change the camera. Okay. Um, but yeah, every single day, trucks are coming in, pigs are coming in, and they're dying at this facility, despite the fact that, yeah, it's, it's putting the workers' health at risk, it's putting the public health at risk. I mean, DXC has done investigations showing that, uh, that, that these pig facilities are pumping these animals full of antibiotics, which is going to be, it's, it's creating a, a perfect environment for superbugs and antibiotic resistant viruses um, to come about. And it's, it's just waiting. It's another pandemic waiting to happen. So are activists stopping this truck? No, we're not stopping this truck. This truck just went straight in. Thanks for being there, Brittany. And thanks, There's you said a lot of people had to leave for work, but it definitely- Trucks from Utah. Yeah, which should be soon. And um, I'm just gonna pull something else up at this moment. And um, since we're talking about what campaigns we have going on and, and the pressure that we're keeping on Smithfield, I just wanna show people a really easy way for you to get plugged into our work. So you should be able to see the DXC website now and our campaign page about uh, exposing Smithfield and like this recent investigation did, exposing their trail of blood all the way from Utah to California in this mini documentary, Unseen, which is right here on our website. Just go to dxe.io slash unseen and you'll find not only this documentary that you can watch and share with friends and family, um, and anyone who needs to see it, share it on, on your social media channels, but also see our campaign ask, which is why is California still complicit in this industry where we have so much overwhelming evidence that it is sickening workers, including 200 people at this specific facility uh, right outside of LA where activists are right now, Farmer John's, and where we've exposed egregious animal cruelty at some of the largest factory farms in the world. Where are they sending their pigs? right to California, which is supposed to be this progressive state, which has led the way in a lot of other social justice issues. In fact, the governor of California, Gavin Newsom, actually made an emergency order to declare a moratorium on the death penalty. Uh, that was part of his platform, what he was running on when he became the governor of California, and he did enact that moratorium. It was really controversial at the time the legislature was split, but he, he passed it as an executive order. And he can do the same thing with factory farms and slaughterhouses. And that's why we're asking, instead of propping up this industry, instead of giving $2 million of state funds to the construction of new slaughterhouses, which is what happened at the slaughterhouse for the construction of this slaughterhouse that's exposed in this video, uh, we want to move in the opposite direction. We want to take a stand against this violence. And so you can join and left outside the facility in open bins. You can see a photo of that here, just how disgusting that is. But, but think about the animals, you know, this isn't garbage that they're throwing away. This is the flesh of a sick individual who wanted medical treatment, who wanted to live and be healthy and safe and free and happy and all the things that we want just like they do. But they were deprived of that because of the bottom line being profit. They did not get medical care because as soon as you start investing money into helping treat an animal's illnesses, you lose the profit margin that you are going to make from killing that animal for food. So even at smaller scale family farms where they, they maybe do treat the animals a little bit better, they're still operating on a profit 
motive. They have to make money off these animals and they let these animals get sick and suffer and, and in many cases die. And many pigs did arrive at this farm, at this facility um, dead upon arrival. So you can help us. I'll put this take action up here because we want you on live stream to do this as if you can to join us in tweeting at Gavin Newsom and demanding a moratorium on slaughterhouses and factory farms. If we can prevent the construction of these facilities, that's a great first step to ultimately banning them. Instead of expanding Smithfield's supply chain, which is what this company is trying to do, they're already the largest pig killing company in the world. They already kill so many animals, millions of animals, but we, but they're trying to expand and we need to stop that. And so that's our first step. That's our ask. If you can share this live stream and if you can go to dxe.io slash unseen and share that documentary with more people, it's the reason that, that we came out for this action, why we're doing this live stream today to elevate it more and to follow the journey these pigs go through as they are in their final hours of life. We need to get that to the public's attention and we need to demand change from our government. So those are all really simple ways that you can help. And if you've already done it, if you've already shared the live stream and you've already signed up and watched the documentary and all of that, then please encourage more people to do it. If we all tap into our social networks, we can change hearts and minds everywhere and we can and mobilize even more people uh, in the movement for animal liberation. People are our greatest asset. Um, I'm going to see if uh, Raven or Curtis, if you all seem like you've got good signal, if um, you're able to jump in, if you want to unmute yourselves. Yeah, so I'm hearing Cassie, can you repeat the question, please? We were just having a, a, a chat. Oh, just wanted to get an update from you all because I know you're not too far out and um, hear, hear yeah, more. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so yeah, we're so about, we're 20, about minutes 20 minutes out right now. Right now. Um, everyone, um, everyone is extremely like, tired. You can only you can imagine how those things are feeling. Anyone on those, anyone on those, anyone on those, um, all this stuff right now, especially those who are, who are, uh, who are ill or injured, um, since they haven't been given the treatment they deserve, they haven't been given water or food. So we're fully expecting that at least one individual on one of those trucks. Um, has died during this journey, and that their their um, their body has been um, there with their friends um, for for at least some part of this journey. Um, it could be hours; we just don't know. Um, so so we're hoping to get a drone in the air once we get there, and we'll get footage of that, and we might get footage of them dragging a body off of the truck, um, just to document that that happens all the time. We're not quite sure. Um, since the um, since the layout at this facility is a little different than the other one. Um, but yeah, we're going to see what we can get. Um, we're not quite sure if um, if we're going to be able to stop a truck or not yet. Um, you know, so um, but we would love to be able to, to give water to these pigs and have their um, their story told because um, if they're in the trucks, no one's seeing them right now. And I'm just looking for a picture right now, um, which is one of the pigs I met, um, a victim of Smithfield, and um, this this very sweet this very sweet pig um, was just looking at me. Uh, through through their little holes, like wondering who I am and why I'm there, and, and wondering if you know I might be kind to them, or if I'm there to harm them, like pretty much all the other human beings um, they've ever met have done. Um, you know, pigs are incredibly intelligent social beings. So, um, so it's really shocking to see 200. Of individuals just like them crowded into each one of these trucks. These are 600 individuals that are about to be arriving at um, Smithfield's Farmer John Slaughterhouse, where, like Brittany said, we're going to be a facility that doesn't care about human beings. They don't care about animal beings. They care about profits. Um, so, so we're here to show that um, that lives matter more than profit. That suffering matters. That no um, no corporation should be allowed to exploit and make other beings suffer for profit and so um so that's why we're um yeah we're almost there and um i haven't been to farmer john since 2016. sometimes your service is a little, a little spotty little, raven but little while, little while. you oh, always wow. come back but uh, as, uh can you hear me now So I was just going to say the exterior of Farmer John's, for those who haven't been there, there's this very, um, 
it's, it's actually quite disgusting and it's quite, um, I would even say perverted, where the exterior of Farmer John's is actually painted with a mural of green grass and trees and happy pigs with their babies, a mother pig and her babies nursing from her, laying in the field as though they're happy. It's just a perfect example of the lie they sell to people. People, many people have never met a pig. They have no idea who a pig is. They ha they've met dogs. They have an idea of who a dog is, but we've never really met pigs. The average person has never met a pig. I've met many pigs before, and every one of them has been an individual, unique to themselves, with all sorts of of different personalities and um, and desires and and pigs to me are wonderful. But the exterior of this of this building just shows this scene. And when you go to Smithfield Circle Four Farms in Utah, where these pigs actually come from, it is the complete opposite. It is it is just a massive installation of metal sheds and pigs confined inside these dark rooms in cages in crates barely as large as their bodies where they can't even turn around. They never ever see grass. They never smell the sweet clean air because the air in Utah is polluted with ammonia and hydrogen sulfide from the from the waste lagoons that surround Circle Four, poisoning the communities, exploiting the workers there, and making people sick. So they just take the pigs who have lived there their whole life, they put them on these metal trucks, send them through, how much? How hot was it today? 107 degrees. It was even 99 degrees after the sun went down. And these hot metal trucks where they slowly weaken and die, carrying illnesses here to California, where they're where they're killed for profit so that, so that they can be sold as so they're a product. So um, yeah, so we're getting quite close now. Um, let's see how close are we? Um, it's about yeah, okay. So like 16, 16 minutes away now um, for Farmer John's, and um, we'll see what happens when we get there. Uh, if these three trucks there, no matter what, we're hoping to get our drone in the air and document some of this. You'll notice if you if if you see the the front of Farmer John's there, uh, they have this large large wall and this um, the sliding door you can you can't even peek through it they do not want anyone to see what actually happens there the only people who get to see that are the poor workers who are just getting sick and being exploited mentally and physically um, so so we're really encouraging anyone who works for Smithfield or with Smithfield or anyone in this industry to a not you can confidentially report anything that you've seen at one of these facilities so that we can help bring truth to people because people deserve to know what's happening here. And you can do that, I believe it's dxc.io slash whistleblower. Yes, that, that, that right? works. dxc.io slash whistle also works. I just put the link in, in the chat or in the comments as well. So, so, so Unseen, the short 10 minute documentary that I was able to create um, recently, it's at dxc.io slash unseen, but it wouldn't have been possible without someone at um, this that facility um, allowing uh, some of this footage to be taken, and um, and it's really it's really um, it's really uh, important for workers to share their stories to know that people are willing to stand with them. I know a lot of workers fear fear the police, they fear being deported, they fear ICE, but these are we're talking about your life on the line here, and we we need to stand with workers. We need to protect them, their health. They deserve better. They do not deserve to be put in these situations where they're exposed to diseases or made to to um, to treat animals in this way. Um, so we want we want to know that we want everyone to know that we stand on the side of workers, not on the side of Smithfield who exploits them, they exploit animals, they exploit people that are lying to them. So um, we just believe people should know the truth. And if they're if if what Smithfield was doing was really okay, they wouldn't be hiding. These facilities in the desert in Utah, um, they wouldn't be hiding the slaughterhouses behind steel walls and and um, and never telling people what happens there. So um, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So we, so we so know, we know everyone knows what they're doing is wrong. It's just a matter of getting the laws changed to outlaw uh, their ethical crimes and their um, their immoral behavior. Um, they shouldn't be allowed to exploit any beings, human or otherwise. Um, um, Thanks, Raven. And I can see Curtis as well in the other car behind you. Curtis, do you want to check in with folks after eight hours driving? Sure, yeah. yeah. Um, it's been quite a journey. I uh, started up in a town just outside of Minersville, Utah, just west of Minersville, Utah. And I encourage everybody to just go check out Google Maps, switch into terrain mode, 
go west of Minersville and you're just going to see these shed after shed after shed and lagoon after lagoon and pig feces just in this whole, this entire valley of, of this otherwise beautiful, uh, picturesque part of, of the world, part of, part of the United States. It's just a wonderful, beautiful place and there's just, just hidden violence there. So yeah, it's been a long journey. We're about 15 minutes away. I am getting um, everything uh, ready to go here. I've got uh, I'm getting this drone ready to go. I've got, got a battery charger down here. We're charging up um, some other things. Got the uh, controller, and we're going to try to get some, get a pretty neat uh, drone shot of um, an action that may or may not happen. Uh, at, uh, in LA, it looks like there's a truck that is just rolling in to the uh, Farmer John Slaughterhouse in LA right now. Uh, I can see, or, or leaving, an empty one just left. But we have three that we're following that are going to be uh, entering in pretty short succession. And we will be there to, to uh, you know, fill you in on what, what happens then, which should be, again, within the next 15 minutes. And. Yeah, yeah, it's been, it's been a long journey, and uh, we're all kind of frazzled, uh, and it's, it's probably nothing compared to what the animals have been going through. It's 66 now, it's a lot cooler than it was, but not even, you know, two, three hours ago, it was, it was 107, it was 40 degrees warmer out than it is now, and as Raven has been talking about a few times, Every day, there are, are there are a handful of dead individuals that arrive dead. They call them DOA, dead on arrival. This is like an industry industry term for like technology, like uh, TVs and uh, other tech components. You buy something and it's and it's broken when you order when you get it. When, it, when Amazon ships it to you, it's DOA. And we're using the same term on on sentient beings that are treated like property, treated like machines, not property or things. And we need to start treating them with respect and kindness, like like we should treat everyone. So, so we expose this, and we thank you for joining. We thank you for watching. Something that you can easily do to help get this message out is you can just simply share this live stream. That would mean a lot to all of us that have been in this car, in this car for eight hours. Um, uh, copy that, Louis. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna. Hand I don't know how to get there. I'll need directions. Um, I need to get working on this drum stuff. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah, Sounds yeah, good. Thanks, Curtis. And yeah, everyone who's been in the car, just an incredible effort. And not only have they been in the car all day today following this truck, but they've been scouting just the past couple of days before this to figure out the routes and spent basically three days in a car besides sleeping. So um, thanks so much for all that time you're putting in. And it's been incredible to expose this to more people. We've had thousands of people watching this today, hundreds of thousands of people over the course of the eight hours that we've been live and um, actually hit the Facebook limit and started another live stream. But um, we definitely want to see the the journey come to a close and see the final you know chapter for these pigs, this death that they don't deserve and to try to get a drone up into the air above the slaughterhouse to be able to capture from an aerial view the, the scale of this facility and possibly uh, the unloading of these pigs or things that we might not be able to see just from public property. So we're not totally sure what we're going to see, but it's less than 10 minutes now. Um, they're approaching Vernon, California, where Farmer John's Slaughterhouse is, which is owned by Smithfield. Smithfield is the largest pig killing company in the world. Um, some people in the chat are saying thank you for targeting Smithfield and, and how horrible this company is. Michael Fujimori, a great social media supporter of DXC, is saying much love to each one of you. Much love to you, Michael, and thank you for being on the live stream at almost 1 a.m. Thank you for all your tireless activism. Um, you know, we often might be tired or want to take a break, but as the folks in the car keep pointing out, these pigs are exhausted too. They're also terrified. You know, on top of what we're going through with heat or stress or exhaustion, 
they have to deal with this overwhelming panic of knowing that something horrible is going on and they don't know what and they don't know exactly what's going to happen to them but they know it's not good because they haven't been treated well by anyone they've never been shown compassion they've only been handled roughly and transported into this truck with hundreds of other pigs around them and and they're scared um they're scared of what's going to come and that's a that's a heartbreaking feeling to know that they're going through that right now and to not necessarily be able to help them but that's why we have to take all the action we can to expose this industry and to demand system-wide change and to, man to demand legislative change so everyone even if you're not in california please join us in in tweeting at and emailing and, and targeting the governor of california gavin newsom this is a, a progressive governor. He's really responded well to the pandemic crisis, um, but only by treating the symptoms and not by treating the root cause, which we know is animal agriculture. These diseases are coming from facilities of animal exploitation, and we need to, we need to treat the root cause. Um, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. That's a good one I, I picked up from Matt Johnson. So. Uh, we really need to, to get his attention on this issue and demand a moratorium so that no more facilities like Farmer John's or like Yosemite Foods, which was just constructed, uh, no more of these places of violence and disease are built inside of the state of California as a first step, a first domino step uh, to knock down on the way to canceling animal agriculture completely, preventing future pandemics completely, protecting animals and workers and creating a more sustainable and humane future for everyone. Uh, Raven, do you want to jump in here as you approach or what's your plan as you all start to uh, go live uh, at the farm? Yeah, yeah. So we're, we're, uh, uh, we are now we're seven, now seven minutes, minutes away, away um, um, from, from, from Farmer John's. And um, yeah, so uh, we discussed, um, you know, our plan here and um, we're going to try to get a drone in the air to document um, what happens when these individuals are taken off of the trucks. Um, we may or may not see um, the individuals themselves. Farmer John's holding pens are pretty well covered. They definitely don't want anyone to see these individuals. So really these trucks are usually the only way anyone can get even a small glimpse to see who these animals are and what they're, what they're suffering with. But we're hoping to get a, some, some good footage from our drone. Um, the, I just saw another truck just arrived at the facility. We have three trucks with us. There are probably many more trucks behind us, and this happens every day. H hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of animals, individual animals, uh, who feel just like a dog. They are, they are, they are, they are gentle, sweet individuals who um, who are shown no love, no compassion, no respect, very little medical treatment, who are allowed to. Um, to, to suffer with illnesses that eventually turn into diseases that, um, you know, that they're arriving to this facility with from all over the country, potentially. So, um, so we're really scared for the workers. We're really scared for these individuals who have been on this long journey with us. We've been following them for, for almost nine hours uh, from the deserts in Utah through 100 degree heat um, and now to arrive here. Um, and these individuals have no idea. They have no idea. Uh, what's waiting for them ahead. They just know this has been a really long, hot, um, difficult ride as they've been crowded together, 200 of them per truck, crowded together as the truck moves around, um, unrestrained, they're just they're just falling all over. And, um, you know, um, they're probably hoping that this is their, this is their escape. They've been in Smithfield Circle 4 sheds uh, their entire lives, and they're only six months old, so they're still kind of like babies. Um, as far as how long pigs can live, and um, and so they're still curious. They're they're wondering what's going on. They smell all the smells now of Los Angeles. All this now maybe not some great smells, but um, but still very interesting smells to them, which they've never smelled before because the only smells they smell back at Smithfield was ammonia and hydrogen sulfide, and other really really corrosive smells that that get into your lungs and sting your eyes. Um, and that's what farmers have, or that's what workers have to deal with. They have to go into those sheds every day and, and they're, you know, they're not shown any compassion either. So, um, yeah, so we're almost there. We're now five minutes away. We've now entered the kind of, um, industrial area, um, of this part of Los Angeles. Um, and, uh, we're just, yeah. So let me see if I can switch my camera around as we're approaching now. Um, since we have a little bit more light here in the city, and I know it's quite zoomed out, um, but this slaughter truck is now driving 
um, through um, what looked like, you know, pretty nice little neighborhoods here. I mean, uh, you know, um, we've got like little stores and banks and 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 restaurants and things. And these, you know, no one is out now. It's it's almost one o'clock in the morning, and this is this is why they do this. They want to hide these individuals from the public. Um, and um, and yeah, so now they're they're just about to arrive at the slaughterhouse in about four minutes or about a mile and a half away. And, um, you know, they're, it's heartbreaking to not be able to do anything for them because um, they, the law considers them property. And that means they, that means somehow that makes them different as though, as though labeling them property their own types of flus. And so these flus are, are recombining to create new novel viruses like the G4 swine flu. And no one is no one is paying attention to that. No one is paying attention to what Smithfield is doing with their 500,000 pigs um, confined in the desert just to be sent here for profit. And um, yeah, so these individuals are probably looking outside of these windows. Um, they're now two minutes away, just under a mile. Let's see if I can switch the camera here. Um, and they're just we're just um coming down the road now it's really quiet um and it's hard it's difficult to believe how los angeles um has allowed this facility and all of its risks and all of its abuses of workers and all of its lies to to um to trick consumers into thinking um, what they're selling is a product. And they've allowed this to happen for so long. But I guarantee you that it's a matter of time. It's just a matter of time before enough people see the truth. We're now at the slaughterhouse, which has a mural, a mural of, of happy pigs frolicking in fields. And it's hard to see from here. You I can't see it from here, but I invite anyone to come down to the Farmer John Slaughterhouse and look at this mural. And then if you're if if you have the time, go to Smurf. All right, so another truck has arrived at Farmer John's. I'm gonna try this back up. Yeah. It looks like there. Activists are now outside Farmer John's giving water to the pig. Oh no, my light just died. All right, my light just died, but I can definitely see Someone's body part and a lot of blood trickling down this 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 truck. We have Emma here who's giving water to the pigs right now. They definitely look really thirsty. They're all a lot of them are laying down. They look clearly exhausted from this journey. We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna back up really quick because there's a car that wants to get through. We 
we can see that there's like three more trucks that are backed um, that are backed up on this street. Taking up almost the entire street of trucks waiting to get into this slaughterhouse. trickling down the sides of this slaughter truck all day as the pigs made their way to Farmer John's. They're clearly very thirsty. A lot of them are, are too tired to even get up and come towards the water. Someone's tail sticking out of the of the truck right now. Uh, yeah, we've been we've been giving water for at least a minute. We may have to move back to the sidewalk fairly shortly. So how long we're gonna be able to stop these trucks before they go into the slaughterhouse? All right, so these pigs have trekked more than 500 miles in a long time. Now we're outside of Farmer John Slaughterhouse, which is, is a Smithfield owned slaughterhouse. These pigs have made a huge trek today in over 100 degree heat. And now our pigs are giving them water before they go into the slaughterhouse and are eventually killed. The trucks are clearly um, not happy that we've stopped them. The pigs are very curious. Some of them look scared. Okay, and now we're moving back to the sidewalk. All right, so one last look at this truck before it goes into the slaughterhouse. I can see blood, I can see feces that has just been spilling down the side of this truck all day as these pigs have languished in this metal box in over 100 degree heat. So now we can just see truck after truck rolling into Farmer John's where they're going to unload these pigs and these pigs will get slaughtered tonight. These poor babies, they've been stuck in these trucks a lot of them are, are laying on top of each other because there's barely enough room for them. They, they literally all can't stand up at once in these trucks. Move! 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 The and and they, this has been like an, an all-day trek for them where they, they can't move. They're laying on top of each other. These pigs are exhausted. They've been traveling in over 100 degree heat in these metal boxes. And, and after that harrowing journey, they're all going to be unloaded. And they're all going to be slaughtered tonight at Farmer John's. Yeah. Hi. Thank you, too. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. We already have one more truck uh, uh, that's, that's already empty. They've already unloaded pigs. And they're leaving. Hi. You've been on the road for over 500 miles? Yeah, that's right. Over nine hours. Wow. All the way from Utah. And it's summertime, so the heat must be, you know, I saw the thermometer in the car was over 100. Yeah, it was 107 degrees during parts of the journey. And we got water in, in our cars, but they never got any water. They never stopped for them. 
at all. So this is it. This is what they saw. They got they they're just crowded in there hundreds at a time, um, just to come here. And where can everybody see it? At? Uh, if you go to dxe.io slash live right now, you'll see the live stream. Uh, if you go to direct action everywhere, um, our Facebook page, our previous stream had um, the nine hour stream. You'll find a direct action everywhere on our Facebook page. And we've been watching it. You saw you get pulled over. Uh, it looked like this is I'm not quite sure if I have to throw. Yeah. Uh, so they said you're not doing anything wrong. That's right. Um, we were, the, the truck drivers actually called the police and pulled over. And the police came up and said, well, we're not doing anything wrong, actually. Um, in fact, shouldn't the, shouldn't the police have been checking out who, who's inside of there and what's being done here? Because that's animal cruelty, what we just saw. Yeah, um, no food, so. no water, uh, 500 miles in 100 degree heat. Yeah. Absolutely terrible. Yeah. So right now we're trying to get a drone in the air to witness the unloading to see if any of these individuals died during that journey. Because very likely at least one of them did. I, I believe I might have seen someone someone's body. Um, inside the truck, but we're going to have to check with our drone to see if that's the case or not. So. And we always see, you know, uh, a lot of numerous times, some look like, you know, they passed out or they may have not made the journey. Yeah. And uh, they thank you for that. We have, you know, everybody from the out here. Yeah, thank you so much for being out here. Honestly, hi, Brittany. Thank you so much. Um, you know, most of the time, no one sees these individuals. They travel through the desert every day and no one sees them. Um, you know, so it's so great to see some people raising awareness and have bearing witness for them because these victims deserve justice and they're only going to get justice if people understand what's happening. That's amazing that you, you made the whole journey because it is. <laughs> yeah, you. it's very long. Thank you. Yeah. This is your second time making this journey. Yes. Last time I was by myself. So it's great to have other people here. Thank you so much. Yeah. And to see what Smithfield is doing on both ends. They're abusing communities in Utah and exploiting workers there and poisoning their air and water. They're abusing animals and they're bringing them here on, on roads that, that the public pays for into this facility and it's all for profit. And we don't even know what happens behind these walls because look, they don't want anyone to see what happens in there. And that's why I made the documentary Unseen. It's a 10 minute documentary. It just shows an example, just a glimpse into one of these facilities, the slaughterhouse in California where Smithfield pigs arrive with diseases and illnesses. They arrive dead and crippled. And when they do get to the kill floor, they're treated like they're treated like objects. They wake up on the kill line and they don't even care. So if you go to dxc.io slash unseen, you can see what this industry is. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Um, we started, we left uh, Minersville, Utah. I think it was 3.30, 3.30 um, p.m. Our first car left. And then we um, we followed in the same car shortly after that, about 4 p.m. Um, so yeah, uh, no today. So so it's I don't know what time it is. Oh yes, yesterday. Yes, it's, it is Friday now. So yeah. So um, thank you so much. Oh hi, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. For all of you, thank you so much for caring. Yeah, that was just three tries. We, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for caring. Thank you so much. Above and thank you. Well, you too. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Oh my gosh. I mean, what you guys are doing is incredible. Typically, when people do something, there's something to gain. You're doing it for the love, for the compassion. Yes. And there is, that is the most priceless, the most greatest gift anyone, anyone could give give from the heart and soul without any expectation. Thank you. Thank you so much. much, blessings and much love to you. What's your name? Annie. 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 Hi, Annie. I'm Raven. Thank you so Thank much. You, You're so Raven. kind. You Thank you for being full of love. Yeah. Thanks for being love here, too. Love you, love you so much. And who are they? Chanel. 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 Hi. Yeah. Oh, thank, thank you for thank coming. You for, for for the oh, I thought you were for Betty Booker. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. What you're doing is, wow, words cannot say enough. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. You must be exhausted. Yeah, I was really tired. And obviously. Love you so much. Love yeah. you guys. Love thank you. Everyone Thanks, of Brittany. You, you Rich, and every one of you. You had to come back. I go. I can only imagine how exhausted, like, you must feel 
And then how much, how grass you going to feel just, you know, seeing the pig and knowing what they're going through. Yeah, not being able to help them. Yeah, not being able to help them, not being able to to do really anything for them in this moment is, um, it's really heartbreaking. When, when I was a document slaughterhouse in Stockton, um, that was the hardest part for me is to not intervene because this is a crime. It is, it is cruel. Law enforcement should be doing something to protect the people. But we know they want it. And the industry is very powerful. They have, you know, they have, you know, they have people law enforcement on their side who want, you know, who are here to protect them as a, as a, as a corporation for profit. So. Um, so that's why we need more and more people to stand up, stand up for justice for the workers who are getting sick with COVID right here, and the animals yep. who, who come in from hundreds of miles away, sick with illnesses, denied medical care, not given food and water, to be here to be treated like machines, like objects, like products. So that's not right. We need more people to stand up for what's right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and these pigs, like, they, they literally have... Like they don't have a day off. There's they've never had like one happy day in their life. Not that having like one happy day would would make it any better and would make this okay. But just it's so it hurts your heart to like really know that they went from such horrible conditions where they were in Utah to a horrible truck, you know, piled on top of each other, like in their own excrement, yeah. you know. Thirsty, unable to drink, for and you know, burnt like probably like really hot, like sweltering so hot. in those you can, you can big understand. metal boxes. Yeah, some of them laying down hot with others piled on top of them because they put as many as them will fit in there. They don't care if they're comfortable. They don't care if they have enough room to turn around. You yeah. see them; they're just crammed in there, and it's two stories high. So how can you take two hundred individuals like that? Then they're just like dogs. There's no, this, it's a hypocrisy. It doesn't make sense. It's not based in science to treat two different living beings who feel the same, any different. So this is a law. This is a hypocrisy that cannot stand in law. We, we must change the laws to protect all animals, all beings, all workers deserve protection. All animals deserve protection. It's really simple. Like future generations are going to look back at this time and just think, how, how did they not know? How could they be so blind? And so the sooner we change the system, the better. I'm actually worried we might not have a future if we don't wake up and we don't make these connections. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, the fact that, like, even the police, when they're here, they always, like, any time we're, we're challenging any of these huge corporations, the police always say, like, they're just preserving the peace, they're protecting the peace. But it's like, how is there any peace? How can this be called peace when literally behind these doors, they're torturing and like brutally killing these innocent animals. It's the, the, the complacency and the silence creates this negative peace where everyone thinks everything is okay because the victims are kept quiet, the victims are hidden behind these walls, and everyone thinks everything is fine. But when you see, when you expose it, when you show people what's happening inside here, when it's happening at Smithfield, what's happening inside these trucks, most healthy human beings say that's not right. How can this happen? How can this happen in our backyard? Why are why are corporations allowed to do this to money? This doesn't make sense. You're putting everyone in danger. You're exploiting workers. You're treating workers like machines. It's, it doesn't make any sense. We need to we need to attack the root cause of exploitation, and that starts here. We need to treat any any sentient any living being for the for who they are. They deserve basic protection under the law. It's really simple. That's exactly right. Yeah. And, and how did you feel? Um, have you seen the mural? Yeah, on Farmer John's before? several times, and it's, it's, I invite, I want people to learn for themselves. I want people to listen to me. I want people to try to find out for themselves. Come look at this mural yourself at Farmer John's at East Vernon Avenue in, in Los Angeles. Then travel to Minersville, Utah. Go to Smithfield Circle 4 Farm. Look and see what they're, what they're hiding from you. They're lying to you. You deserve to, the truth. You do not deserve to be lied to. So as long as the companies are allowed to lie to consumers, and create this thing they call a product and trick people into putting it into their bodies, they're going to be allowed to do this. So we need to create the laws that they are not allowed to lie to people. They are not allowed to hide the truth. They are not allowed to abuse and exploit animals. They are not allowed to make workers sick. And right now the law is failing us. They're fail it's failing our human beings and it's failing our non-human beings. The trucks have now been emptied. That's only been like, what, 10 minutes since we've been talking, since the trucks went in and they're already coming out. They're already rolling out. 
So we're about to, we're about to get the drone up, it looks like. And Curtis looks like, yeah, it looks like Curtis is about to get the to drone get up. In the air and see if we can document some of what's happening inside. But yeah, just to talk a little bit more about um, the, the mural here that's that's painted all around this building on Farmer John's. Um, it's so obvious, even to like non-animal rights people, people who don't really generally care about animals, how incongruous the, that mural is with what's happening, um, with what's happening inside because we're in the middle of, of a literally like a city that's just a bunch of corporations. And this building is just a big concrete building that takes up an entire city block. And, and the mural that wraps around this whole building depicts this like country fair, you know, happy life where people are out in the country having fun and, and, um, and the pigs are like living it up basically but it's so obvious when you drive past here that this is just a concrete and brick building where animals are taken to be killed there's nothing further from the truth than the mural that's on the building outside farmer john's it's a total lie it's a total uh, all right i'm gonna stop talking because the live stream is up All right, hey everybody! Uh, thanks for hanging in there. Got uh, obviously a late night happening here outside of the uh, Farmer John Slaughterhouse uh, outside of Los Angeles. Uh, right now, we're seeing about getting a drone set up here so we can take a look inside and see um, uh, with, with the the drone footage. Um, but we'll see if uh, the signal is going to cooperate with us. Uh, we're hoping to to get a get a look inside of there to see uh, kind of the the next step of this process where the the pigs are unloaded inside of this facility um, beyond the gates uh, where where you just witnessed the the trucks going inside. Uh, so we'll see. Actually, as of right now, the Technology is not cooperating with us, unfortunately. Uh, we're gonna see if we'll keep trying on that. Um, the drone's so, not recording, but we can't stream it. Yeah, yeah, so we'll at least have something recorded that we can maybe work with later if, unfortunately, it's not uh, connecting. Uh, so it, it'll be interesting to, to, to record that. Um, obviously at this point they have a very good idea that they're being watched so they will probably uh, be on their best behavior and on their most secretive behavior so things that may have been done uh, kind of in the outdoors can 
you know, we moved indoors. So in that way, it's, you know, but, but we'll, we'll see uh, what we're dealing with with that. Um, <clears throat> in terms of uh, exposure, today was a, was a successful day. Obviously, kind of always bittersweet with something like this because the ending is what it is with these pigs going inside of this um, slaughterhouse. Um, but it was uh, gratifying to see so many people so many views was that this is actually uh, not this but the the prior live stream that i'm sure most people watching this are aware of uh that we had it was actually the most viewed live stream ever for direct action everywhere so that's obviously a very good thing uh had about a 900,000 views so um obviously reaching a ton of people uh, and we we played how many times did we play that documentary the, the three and a half half times we played the the documentary so getting a ton of visibility on that and a lot of the people that viewed it actually viewed it through other pages so we're we're reaching a lot of people who are not kind of standard animal rights activists so that's um really encouraging stuff as well so um i'm not sure i'm going to keep monitoring this and seeing what we can make happen um but uh uh yeah, it's acting like it's playing something. Oh, now it says was live. Yeah, it did the same thing. So it, yeah, it's pretty much not working. <laughs> but um, you know, let's. I don't know. Let's see if we can get in touch with some of the folks there. Um. Uh, okay, sorry about that, folks. Just uh, bear with us here. We're seeing what everybody's up to there on the ground. Um. Uh, all right, so uh, hey folks, we're uh, live on the DXC page right now. It's just it's me talking. Um, <clears throat> but uh, Raven, maybe you want to come on. Um, yeah, Ra Raven, let's uh, go to you. Unfortunately, the the drone isn't working, but um, oh, Raven looks like you got something there. So yeah, uh, uh, Raven, just go ahead and you can talk. Yes, yes. So weird. So are you like? Okay. I'm good. live streaming off this. Yeah. So I'm not sure if you can see Matt from this image. I'm actually having to hold this over our drone, um, our drone monitor. They're actually, they actually screen off this entire area with curtains and sheeting and hiding the truck under a canopy because they do not want anyone to see. Even with a drone, it's very difficult for us to see what is going on here because every part of this operation relies on secrecy. So you can see there, we are seeing pens. We're seeing a worker in the back in the pen. And uh, right, there we go. I'm not sure if anybody knows uh, if this is the normal way they're doing things or if they've modified what they normally do because they know you're out there or do, do, do you have any info on that? It's my understanding that this is normal, that they, that they screen, screen and, and, hide. and hide. Oh, we just, oh, saw, we just someone saw someone hitting, hitting, a, pig hitting a pig to get them to, get them to move into the holding, holding pens. pens. Mm -hmm. And this and one this is, one is, is in, the, in the, this one this is in the pen. They're in the, the shoot that leads to the pen. Um, sorry, can you move, can the, move the, it back to the, can you move it back to the truck? It's this area. Another truck just, another truck just showed up. Just showed up. So this, so this is another, is another Smithfield, Smithfield Circle, Circle 4 truck, truck that's truck. come from Minersville, Utah, that did the same journey we just did. Truck after truck arrived this way. And I can't describe the smell. I mean, obviously crowding hundreds of individuals together for, for half of a day, over hundreds of miles in the heat. Uh, it's not good, but... They're going to close this the screening again so that no one can see what's going on in there. And Curtis, uh, Curtis is here on the drone, trying not to block his view. But we're seeing that truck now. 
that is just pulled into the holding pen or holding area and backing up to the holding pens in a minute. And this happens almost every night. It doesn't matter how many human workers get sick. It doesn't matter how many animals are sick. It doesn't matter what diseases anyone has. It's all about profit. It's all about killing as many as possible in as short amount of time as possible to make money. And it's all unnecessary. It's all cruel. It's all dangerous. So that, that truck just now backed up. I'm not sure that there's room for them in the um, actual unloading area. So it looks like they're just gonna wait in there. Can we get, try to get a shot of the unloading area again? There, there you go. And then behind those trucks maybe. I'm not sure how high you are. Oh, you're still pretty high. Yeah, so, um, so we're seeing workers now having to come in contact with thousands of suffering individuals. There's a, hold on. So, so if you can zoom in on there or somehow. Far in, okay, go. so we see, I'm not sure if you can see from here, but we see, let's see if let's I can see, see on here. here. Yeah, we can see. So there are two, there we go. There are two, there there are two, two individuals, individuals right, right now. now. One, 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 one seems, seems to be, to be Covering can you like focus on your phone maybe just like hit it and okay. you know, like touch it and get it to focus I and mean, we can you can sort of see but it's kind of blurry um, um yeah, yeah it's, it's not, not it's, it's uh, uh it's having difficulty i'm not difficult. sure if you can see okay. the center, center of the center screen, of the screen there. There. Mm -hmm. there 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 okay you go a little higher again a little higher but there one of them this pig so this pig right here does not seem to be able to get up their back legs are not working for some reason. And they're being left, there they are there. They are being left. Right now, they cannot get up. They cannot get up. They've been separated from the other pigs because they're clearly sick. So that's why they're bringing in that loader. Watch, they're, they're gonna use that loader and lift that, lift that individual. And this individual is actually, it's very difficult to see from this, but we're recording all of this. We're recording this and we'll upload the video later is that there is a dead individual that this individual is laying on top of. At least they appear to be dead. They might just be so sick they can't get up anymore. But these individuals will not be tested for any diseases. They will be written off like garbage, even though right now they are suffering. In a truly compassionate society, these animals would be would be taken somewhere where they can get medical treatment. At the very least, they would be shown compassion in their last moments of life. They wouldn't be treated like products. They wouldn't be treated like garbage. And then they are just suffering all alone with their friend who's probably dead. So Curtis, Curtis is just gonna reposition here. Um, and we see more trucks coming, even more trucks, probably from circle four. So we're gonna take a look and see if these are gurney trucking, then we know they're, we know they're from circle four. And here we have gurney trucking Aurora, Utah. These are circle four Smithfield pigs who have endured over a nine hour journey. Here's another chart. This one also just arrived. It is also gurney trucking from Utah. This also has 200 individuals on it. I don't know if you can see, but this parking lot is full of trucks. Each of these trucks holds over 200 individuals in some cases.
and they don't want people to see inside because they know it's wrong. They know it's wrong. That's why they have to paint a pretty mural on the side of their building that's a lie, hoping people won't ask questions and won't look at the truth. But everyone deserves the truth. How can we protect our future? How can we protect victims from being exploited? How can we protect the workers from getting sick if we don't see the truth? If Smithfield hides it from us, nothing is going to change. Pandemics are gonna be created, animals are going to be abused and killed, and workers are going to die. So that's why we're still out here. I don't even know what time it is. Um, it's it one, is one. 1.30. <laughs> Thank you, Thank Matt, you, Matt for, for being, for being with, with, us with us here. It's been a it's long, been a long day. day. No, yeah, t totally. Uh, yeah, thanks, everybody. Thanks, <laughs> everybody's uh, still out of here. Were you able to see what? I mean, is that one pig still sitting there? Can we see if the pig is still sitting there? Who has oh, yeah. his back okay. legs aren't working? There's so many. Oh, you'll have to come back. Um, so we're just gonna switch out the battery. Um, in our drone, I think, since we're, since we're just low on battery right now, but chances are they are. This is not unusual. This is very common. That's why um, that's why I felt compelled to share what I found at the other slaughterhouse I investigated, which is Yosemite Foods in Stockton, California, where pigs from Smithfield arrive, and there I was able to show what people normally don't see. What Farmer Johns is trying so hard to keep hidden from people is that pigs are being treated like objects, even though they are feeling, thinking beings just like us. So if you go to dxc.io slash unseen, you can see for yourself. And I'm just going to show you. This, this, this individual looks dead. So this individual looks oh, like a nope, DOA. They're moving a little bit. So they're not, they're not dead yet, but they are severely ill. And they were pulled off of one of these trucks from Smithfield Circle 4. And they are being left by themselves as they struggle to get out. There's another pig. There's another pig suffering in the corner. It's hard to see. But we'll post this video. We'll post this video once we're done. But there are at least three pigs in this, what I assume is their suspect pen, which are those individuals. I'm sorry, one second. So this is the pen where obviously symptomatic individuals are separated from others, even though they've spent all of this time on the trucks together. So those individuals having odd symptoms, like they can't stand or walk, or they, they have other sort of, um, you know, physically, visually obvious symptoms are separated. And then someone, someone makes the call whether or not to kill them now or to slaughter them. And no one ever tests, no one ever checks to see what the root cause of their disease is. The USDA checks to see what symptoms they have, but they do not do viral or bacterial testing for infectious diseases, only foodborne pathogens. So this is happening every day at this facility and the facility in Stockton. And it all starts at Smithfield. This problem starts at Smithfield because they are allowed to impregnate animals, to force them to have babies. And those babies are kept confined in filthy conditions. They're denied medical care. They're pumped full of antibiotics as a broad spectrum sort of, sort of stop gap for whatever inf bacterial infections they have. But the sad thing is that just makes them more susceptible to viral infections. So- All right. Um, so, uh, hey Raven, so uh, yeah, that's I think that's going to be really useful and powerful that that the drone footage. So we you know got a, a little bit of a look at it now, but obviously via the live stream it wasn't the best. But I think yeah. uh, we'll be able to. It's recorded in high quality, so down the road, you know, who knows what we'll be able to use that and put together more high quality videos that then are going to get a lot of visibility and that sort of thing. Maybe you'll have to make another documentary, Raven. Oh, there you go. 
Well, it's, well, it's not going to be the last, the last because, because yeah. as long as, as long industries, industries are allowed to keep these secrets, secrets from people, people someone, someone needs, needs to expose them. them. And it might, and not, it be might me, not be me, but someone needs to step up and show people what's happening here. Yeah. To show to what's show happening what, with the workers, to show what's happening with the pigs, to show that this is dangerous, abusive, unsafe, and exploitive industry that should not be allowed to exist, especially here in California. So we're just trying to get the battery changed over, and we will try to get the live stream working from that phone. but. I'm not sure what you want to do, Matt. Um, all right. Well, um, yeah, I think uh, you also So, I mean, on the DXC live stream, or, uh, there's not a ton of visibility right now. Um, and so I think there's, uh, I mean, it's a certain value. I mean, or actually, if, if Curtis got the live stream going or somebody got the live stream going on their own page, um, is, is one thing to do and then obviously i think the the big value with this would be the high quality video uh to, yeah, to yeah. for future use so okay, okay. i think we uh, uh, are probably thinking uh, we'll wrap up the the dxc yeah, yeah, yeah. stream yeah, 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 yeah. so anyway so so i'm raven this is i mean it, we're all kind of tired so i don't know if I'm, I'm doing this moment justice here all the way but uh obviously just outstanding work by you extremely powerful stuff um, if anybody wants to kind of yeah, give any yeah, last, last, last thoughts here uh, with the DXC live. Thank you. Yeah, we're um, sorry. I can't hear you too great. There's a lot of truck noise around here because of all the um, the trucks from Circle 4. But yeah, we're just going to wrap up. So uh, people are really, really tired. Um, we're really sad after seeing these individuals being arriving here and not being able to do anything for them right now. So, um, so we're going to, yeah, we're going to go ahead and... Um, and try to get back and uh, obviously these pigs are um, you know there's nothing more we can do because we're not allowed in there so, so. all right um yeah so thanks so much for everything um uh, thanks so much for for being there and drawing so much attention it, that that uh, that other live stream is over nine hundred thousand views i don't know if you caught that earlier over nine hundred thousand wow. views so that's the most viewed live stream uh, ever you. for dxe so um that's so wonderful. you know it's really necessary, and um, if you haven't, you know, uh, oh, sorry, kind of went a lot over there, but uh, yeah, check out the the documentary once again. That's dxe.io slash unseen. Uh, show some support there to to activists uh, like Raven who are making this happen. And uh, with that, I think we're going to sign off. Uh, thanks so much, Raven. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you. Thanks a lot of you all. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching.